Paul, you're a very talented geologist. Can I ask what got you very excited about the Cobo Resources Project? Well, it dates back to 2016 when I came over as a consultant with Ted to help him with this project. And we realized that there was a tremendous opportunity um, right next door to a, an operating gold mine that uh, people hadn't recognized before. So the exciting thing about Cobo is this is a brand new discovery. Um, we're currently in a drill program. These are the first drill holes ever done on the pro property. And uh, yeah, we're very, very excited about the opportunity that exists in front of us today. Well, for those of you out there, we follow and love Africa. We love investments in Africa, but we never talk about West Africa. Can you explain some of the advantages of being in West Africa with Kobo? Uh, well, specifically for Cote d'Ivoire, I think one of the advantages that we have is that um, the country is underexplored. And we, we made that recognition again back in sort of 2015, 2016. And we went out there and we've got a number of different concessions. Our key concession is our, our Kasu Gold project, which again is right, right next door, like literally on the Eastern boundary of the uh, Yare mine, which is run by Perseus Mining. And so I think what really gives us a, a, a distinct advantage over a lot of other plays in West Africa in general is that you know, we have infrastructure in place, so we don't need to build a mine necessarily. What we have is the the ability to hopefully find some ounces on the ground and and then look for look for some kind of uh, you know partnership uh, going forward with uh, with the mining company that's that's next door to us. I had the benefit of listening to you present at an investor talk recently, and it wasn't just about the closeology, if I recall. It had to do with something bigger. I would love for you to explain that to our audience. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the Kasu project, again, which is 100% owned by us, um, it, it's, it's, it's unexplored. And, and that, that's what's exciting. And what we've done is we've, we've discovered through a lot of work leading up to our drill program, about nine kilometers of uh, soil geochem anomalies, uh, gold soil geochem anomalies. And, you know, we're in the process now of evaluating those uh, those various anomalies. But the two major zones that we have to that we're dealing with right now is the Jagger zone, which is about a 1.8 kilometer long structural zone that we've identified both in, in so, so, soil geochemistry, mapping, trenching, and now in drilling. And we're currently drilling on our on our road cut zone, which again is one of the first showings that we found on the project. That zone itself, again, is over 1.6 kilometers in, in strike length. Very, very strong gold anomalies, uh, both in, in surface trenching and, and, and soil geochemistry. So there's a lot of room to work, um, to, to explore. There's a lot of room to build uh, mineable ounces on this project. And again, it's it's brand new and it's a new discovery. So we're not rehashing something that somebody's you know tried to drill 10, 15, 20 years ago. This is this is a new discovery, and that's what makes it very exciting for us. I think. If I recall, though, you were explaining what people do wrong with the closeology. You were talking about how they just buy the adjoining property. But in your particular case, you were actually following. I'm not a geologist. So please do correct me. You were following mm -hmm. a vein. Can you please try and dumb that down for me and correct me if I'm wrong? Well, again, a lot of companies play closeology, and you know, but that that closeology could be 20, 30 kilometers away. Again, we're right next door. We know we're in the same volcanic belt. We know we have the same controls on structure. We know we have the same style of mineralizing fluids. So we we really are, really what we are is brownfields exploration. So you might be familiar with that term. Usually when you have an operating mine, anything within the circumference, you know, maybe 20, 30 kilometers would be considered brownfields. So although we are, are a new com or a different company, it's really, I would call it brownfield exploration. And we don't have necessarily veins, we have these shear zones. So these are very, very strong ongoing structures. And, and that's what you're looking for in, in the geological environment in West Africa. You're looking for these dominant shear zones. These shear zones can be up to 100 meters wide, like in our case. Um, and within that, that larger shear zone, we've got a, num a multiple set of, uh, of, of zones in there that we believe are, are mineralized with gold. And that's what we released just recently in our, our, our press release on the first, I think it was nine holes that we drilled or, or we are drilling at the moment. Well, since you brought that up, because that was the next on my questions, tell mm -hmm. us a little bit more about those nine drill holes and some of the highlights of those. For instance, your cell line over your shoulder here is focused on high quality. We're used to seeing high grade. If you can also explain to us what the difference between high grade and high quality is, that would be wonderful. 
Well, I think they're part and parcel. I mean, for us, again, what we have are, are some broad zones of gold mineralization. So for instance, I guess our, our kind of our highlight holes was our second hole where we drilled um, 20 meters at 1.87 grams per ton. But that included a couple of higher grade sections. So up into the you know six and eight, and eight meter or eight gram per ton range over a couple of meters. So again, you want those high grade kicks in these broader zones because it can really help you know build ounces over time. Uh, another hole that we drilled that was a KRC 11. We drilled 19 meters. And again, we had you know, over two grams per ton over that width. But again, we had a six meter zone in there that was, you know, over four grams per ton. So, you know, grade is king. You always want grade, um, but you need a combination of both. You need the widths and you need the grades. That's when you can really start developing, you know, tons and, and with the grade, you can develop ounces within your targets as well. So, you know, we also know that, you know, we've got some trench results where we got uh, 29 meters of six and a half grams per ton. We released that, I guess, three weeks ago or so. And the more work we do with road building and, and trenching and, and work in, in on the Jagger zone, you know, we're finding we're finding more trenches like that. So, you know, there's there's a lot of good to be seen on this thing. We do have high grade within there, but we also have nice broad zones that uh, that really make themselves available for open pit mining, which is what our what our targeting is at this point in time. And of course, Dean Bristow, one of our writers, wrote that the market appears quite optimistic about Kobo Resources Made and Drill program and gold. So obviously, you do have an audience already for a relatively new company. You seem to be building an excellent audience. Can you comment on why you think you're doing that successfully when so many others are not right now? I think in part is because we are a new story. Again, I mentioned earlier that a lot of companies are, are you know, drilling old projects. And so that, that gets to be a bit stale after a while. So having something brand new, I think, is an advantage for us. Again, I think our jurisdiction is right. If you look at what's gone on in West Africa in recent uh, months, years, you know, Burkina Faso and Mali are, are, you know, a little bit more, how should I say, dangerous at the moment. There's certainly been some upheavals uh, going on there in, in, in terms of uh, sort of some of the activity that you see. Um, you know, Ghana is, is a very well explored country. Um, and frankly, Cote d'Ivoire has, you know, more of the target rocks, the barium information than any other country. But if you look at their their production profile, it's it's one of the least in in West Africa. So I think it's a combination of we're new, so it's a fresh story. We have an exciting target that we're looking at, and we we're in a country that I think is starting to to garner some some attention where it it maybe hasn't had so much in in the last uh, last ten years or so. Well, I was going to mention management. So for everyone out there interested in Kobo Resources please go to the following website and learn more about Kobo Resources. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you regularly. Appreciate the time, Tracy. Thanks very much.